Imagine a starless patch of space that suddenly flares into life, blasts out a storm of energy for 102 seconds, and then it vanishes, as if someone hit delete on the universe. In 2006, astronomers actually saw something like that. A few of them whispered a wild possibility. What if we'd just seen a white hole? White holes are the astronomy equivalent of urban legends, talked about in serious papers, drawn in equations, but never actually caught in the wild. They fall straight out of the same maths that give us black holes. And in theory, if a black hole exists, their mirror twins aren't completely unlikely. Most physicists still roll their eyes at the idea and say white holes most certainly do not exist. But when you look at how black holes behave and at that strange outburst from 2006, the story gets a little more complicated and a lot more interesting. So what is a white hole meant to be? Think of it as a black hole's evil twin, but running the film backwards. Black hole pulls in matter and light and never lets anything escape. A white hole on paper does the opposite. It throws matter out, but won't let anything in. In other words, it's a one-way exit. You can get sprayed out of it, but you can't fall into it in the first place. The majority of physicists consider the real physical white holes to be unbelievably unlikely. Some would say flat out impossible. And yet the equations of general relativity don't forbid them. Once you write down the maths for a black hole, a white hole solution appears naturally, as the same time reversed version. That's why theorists keep them around. There's a possible way to explain what might happen to all the stuff that disappears into black holes. To see why we might need white holes at all, we need to talk about their famous cousins. A black hole starts its life as a massive star that's run out of fuel for nuclear fusion. The process in the star's core turns light elements into heavier ones and holds the star up against its own gravity. When that fuel is gone, gravity wins. The star collapses inwards and the outer layers can explode in a brilliant supernova. While the core keeps shrinking, its gravity gets stronger as it contracts, squeezing matter down into an unimaginably tiny volume. Push that collapse far enough and the mass says you end up with a point of effective infinite density, what physicists call a gravitational singularity. Around that singularity sits an invisible boundary, the event horizon. Cross that line and the pull of gravity is so intense that not even light can escape. That's why black holes look, well, black. No light comes back from our telescopes from within the event horizon. So the object itself is invisible. We only ever see the effects of it on nearby stars, gas and light. Beyond that horizon, our theories are badly out of their depth. We have decent ideas about how black holes form, but almost no idea what really happens inside or what, if anything, lies beyond them. When something falls into a black hole, a star, a cloud of gas, a photon of light, even an entire solar system. Physicists give all that a single name, information. It's a catch-all term for every detail about what went in. For a long time, the standard story was simple. The information goes in and never comes out. If a black hole were truly eternal, that would be such a headache. You could imagine it as a locked vault. The contents are unreachable, but they still exist somewhere. That would fit nicely with the basic rule of physics that both Isaac Newton and Albert Einstein agreed within their own ways. You can shuffle matter and energy around, but you don't just magic it into being or erase it completely. Then, in 1975, Stephen Hawking dropped a bombshell. By combining quantum physics with general relativity, he showed that black holes aren't perfectly black. They slowly emit energy in a form that we now know as Hawking radiation. And if a black hole radiates for long enough, it shrinks and eventually evaporates. That's where the nightmare starts. If the black hole completely disappears, what happened to the information it swallowed? Hawking's calculations seem to say that the radiation coming out doesn't carry the detailed imprint of what fell in, suggesting the information is gone for good, which classes head on with the rule about not destroying matter or energy, even in principle. Physicists have been arguing fiercely about this information paradox ever since. One of the more intriguing escape routes involves the mysterious white holes. One proposal is surprisingly elegant. Some researchers even picture black holes as potential gateways to parallel universes, not just distant parts of our own. Maybe a black hole isn't the end of the story. Perhaps just after it's finished doing its thing, it transforms into a white hole. In that picture, all the information it hoovered up during its black hole phase eventually blasts back out during its white hole phase. If that's right, nothing is truly lost. The matter and energy are not destroyed when the black hole evaporates, they're just released again, just wildly scrambled. It's like shredding a library of books and then firing the confetti into space. Technically, the words are still there, but good luck trying to read them. 
Some theorists push this even further and imagine a black hole and white hole connected by some wormhole. A wormhole is a hypothetical tunnel that links two distant points in space-time. Instead of traveling straight through normal space, you drop into one end and emerge out from another, having taken a shortcut through a kind of higher dimensional corridor. In this scenario, falling into a black hole wouldn't mean being crushed forever. Instead, you'd be carried through that shortcut and spat out the white hole somewhere else, maybe even in a completely different universe. You wouldn't be racing faster than light in the usual sense. Einstein's special relativity still forbids that. But the path you took would be so warped that the journey looks faster than any normal route. Some speculative versions even suggest that these tunnels could let you jump not just across space, but through time as well. Those time travel ideas are very much in the highly speculative box. But a broader picture is clear. Link a black hole to a white hole and you get a very strange kind of cosmic transport system. There's an even bigger twist on the table. A number of researchers have suggested that the Big Bang itself might have been a white hole event. In that view, what we see is the birth of our universe, the sudden expansion of space, the appearance of matter and energy, could be the outflow from a black hole that formed on some other, older universe. In other words, imagine a black hole forming elsewhere in a larger parent cosmos. On the far side, that process, a white hole appears, and what spews out becomes an entire universe. Our galaxies, stars, planets, everything we can see would then sit inside the interior region of that linked original collapse. That idea has been studied seriously, and while it hasn't been proved, it isn't dismissed as pure fantasy either. If it turned out to be correct, it would mean that our universe lives inside a black hole, embedded in a much bigger reality. Whether or not that grand picture holds up, one thing is clear. If white holes are real, they completely change how we think about the beginnings and endings in the universe. All of these ideas are fun to talk about, but they rise and fall on one thing, evidence. For years, that's where white holes failed. Many scientists are openly hostile to the idea that they could ever exist in reality. Then came that strange event in 2006. Astronomers using observatories on Earth and in orbit constantly scan the sky for high energy signals from deep space, radio waves, X-rays, gamma rays. Among those events, they picked up a gamma ray burst that refused to behave in the way it was supposed to. Gamma ray bursts are usually divided into short and long types. And the long ones, lasting more than a couple of seconds, are strongly linked to supernova explosions. The 2006 burst lasted an impressive 102 seconds, which strongly suggested a supernova type origin. But there was the problem. No suitable exploding star could be found. The usual models just didn't fit what was seen. The team who analyzed the signal basically admitted they wandered into new territory, with no existing theory that really matched the data. With nothing obvious to latch onto, the event was logged, discussed, and eventually moved into the mystery draw. About five years later, some researchers came back to that odd burst with a fresh idea. What if this didn't come from a dying star at all? What if we watched a white hole briefly switch on? In their interpretation, a white hole could have appeared, thrown out a huge amount of energy for those 102 seconds, and then vanished again. But here's the intriguing part. The detailed features of the gamma ray burst line up well with what white hole models say such an outburst should look like. That doesn't prove the explanation is right, far from it. Plenty of astronomers remain unconvinced and would prefer a less exotic solution before invoking a brand new type of object. Still, for now, that 2006 flash remains one of the strongest candidates we've got for a real white hole sighting. If it was one, then these cosmic reverse black holes might not just belong in the equations and thought experiments, they might occasionally flare into existence, dump their cargo of information back into the universe, and then slip away again. So where does that leave us? On paper, white holes fit neatly into the same physics that gave us black holes. They might help resolve deep puzzles about information, and they could even play a role in how our universes begin and end. In practice, we have one very strange gamma ray burst from 2006 and a lot of arguments. Maybe white holes are as mythical as sea monsters in mountain lakes. Or maybe every now and then, the universe really does cough up a brief white hole eruption, and we just haven't recognized most of them yet. So what do you think? Are white holes genuine cosmic creatures? Or elegant fantasies born from our equations? And if you could safely ride a black hole to a white hole shortcut across the universe, would you actually dare to take the trip? Thanks for watching.